Hello again, everyone. It is 8 o'clock a.m. Chicago time on Tuesday, March 7th, 2023. I'm John Kosar from Asbury Research, and this is your Daily Five. These are currently my five most important charts, data series, and Asbury Research quantitative models that I believe will be the most influential to U.S. stock market direction over the next several weeks and potentially into the second quarter of this year. Let's follow the money. When I was with you last, which was exactly one month ago uh, on February the 7th, I talked about the S&P 500 being in the midst of an emerging major bullish trend change um, per uh, a major breakout that occurred on January the 23rd. And we also talked about uh, some extremes in investor sentiment that showed up last year in June and then again in October, which were really, and that um, extreme and bearish sentiment from back then really was kind of the launching pad for the move higher that we have seen, seen since then. So here we go. The S&P 500 is at a strategic decision point. And that is right here where you see the green arrow kind of making a check mark upward. We had a breakout on January 23rd. Uh, that I think was pretty important. We broke through the 200-day moving average, which you can see in orange. We broke through the 2022 major downtrend line that you can see here in black. It's a dash black line. We actually broke the previous minor highs that we made here in December twice, once on the 1st, once on the 13th. And we rallied up to the February 2nd high. And now for the past week, we've been retesting the breakout. <clears throat> it's very common to see a major breakout that everybody sees like this one. Everybody saw the trend line. I think everybody saw the 200-day moving average. It was being discussed over and over again. So now we're backing and filling and seeing if this was a real breakout or not. So this support area is kind of a cluster of support. It starts at 39.92, that's the 50-day moving average, that's the minor trend proxy. 39.40, of course, is a 200-day, that's major trend. And then we have that trend line from uh, January of 2022 that comes in just underneath the 200-day moving average. And then finally, we have a 38.86 low that we made on January the 19th. I see those four levels as a really important inflection point slash decision point for the stock market. If this is a real breakout, if this is the real deal here, the lows that we made at the end of last month, beginning of this month, February 24th and March 2nd, you can see them here where we kind of retested the 200 day moving average. Those should be the lows or somewhere in this cluster between 39.92 and 38.86 ought to be the lows and we should be off to making fresh highs. If it fails there and we roll back down through 38.86, that's going to suggest to me that the market's had a change of heart and we may be resuming the previous downtrend that we went through last year. Number two, market internals. The Asbury 6 is negative. The Asbury 6 is one of two tactical models that we have in-house at Asbury Research that we use to tell us what the internal condition of the market is. It used to be that you could look at the S&P 500 and maybe volume and get a pretty good back of the envelope day-to-day -day indication of what the market was doing, how the market was feeling. You can't do that anymore. The day-to-day -day volatility in the market has really changed that. I think that is primarily due to algorithmic trading. There's more and more computers trading with each other. And you're seeing days when the s and is up 70, and then the next day it's down 50. And when the market's moving around like that, it's really easy to make mistakes. <clears throat> it's really easy to get scared out of a long position when the S&P is down 70 or 80 points in one day. So we built the Asbury 6 to try to focus more on what's going on underneath the hood of the market instead of following every time the market makes a jerky move and then it takes it back the next day. So we took all of my favorite tactical tools that I've been using throughout my career. We started to back test them in 
groups, groups of three, groups of six, groups of four, to see if we can come up with a group of those that tested well, meaning if one or two of those are giving a bad signal, the other four will keep you on the right track. So you're not going to get scared out of a, a good long position in the market because the market had a bad day. So right now, the Asbury 6, five of the six are red or negative. These numbers in these cells are the day that that particular constituent metric turned red or green. So you can see five of six are red. Four or more are necessary for a directional signal. So you can see down here on the chart, the Asbury 6, uh, it, was, it was positive on January the 11th. First, it was positive here on October the 18th. We went to negative in the middle of December. We're back to positive. We went back to positive on Jan January the 11th, and now we're negative as of February 21st. It would take four or more green metrics to turn the Esber 6 back to positive. That's very important because that would tell us that the market internals are showing the strength that we need to get the S&P 500 off the dime here, so to speak, off of this 3940 area and up to the beginning of a new major uptrend. We do not have that yet. Um, so when that turns, that's going to be our signal that not only is the market set up for a rally, but the internals are strong enough to support one. So we're going to be watching that one very closely in the days ahead. Number three, market sectors. The CIF model favors industrials and energy. CIF model, CIF is an acronym. It stands for Sector ETF Asset Flows. We built CIF because the sector rotation sped up. Those of you that trade sector rotation know this. 10 years ago, you could buy a sector and it would outperform for a quarter or two. The trends were longer, they were slower, they were easier to trade. Everything has sped up now. So we built a model to try to be more agile. So what we're doing now is instead of looking at the chart and trying to find the relative performance on the chart, we're actually watching assets move around the 11 sector spiders to try to see where the money is going and where the money is coming from. The model is updated once a week on the weekend. So you have the pre previous week's data. <clears throat> and then we use a scoring system. So you can see we're checking this in three different time frames: Trading, five days. Tactical, 21 days. Strategic, 63 days. And then we're measuring the money moving in and out uh, of the 11 sector spiders in each of those time frames. And we're highlighting the best two, in other words, the best percentage assets in, in green. So over the past week, the best two in terms of assets in were energy and industrials, numbers, numbers one and two here, highlighted in green. And where the money was coming from, the two that had the most aggressive assets out over the past week, technology and healthcare. So then we do this across all three, and then we add up the scores. If there's a score of 3 to 15, that's a favored sector. So right now, the ones that are 3 to 15, we have the industrial sector, financials, energy, and materials. Our neutral sectors are real estate, staples, communication services, technology, and utilities. And our sectors to avoid are currently consumer discretionary and healthcare, all based on a quantitative point system. And you can see down here, those same sectors and their ranking through the end of last week is right here. And the three that are light green, those are our actual CIF model signals. There are a few more criteria in order for it to be a CIF signal. And right now our overweights are industrials, financials, and energy. One point to be made here, CIF has done extremely well over the past 10 quarters. It's outperformed the S&P in eight of those. Right now, it's having a tough quarter. The reason for that is the asset flows moving around the sectors has been really quick. And it's indicative that the market doesn't know what to do here. Um, I mean, I think you could see that if you look at the news, if you watch financial television, the market's rallying here. People don't understand why. People are expecting poor earnings. We're expecting higher interest rates. 
inflationary pressures. So there's a lot of angst, there's a lot of hand-wringing, and there's a lot of uncertainty. So you see money is moving from one sector to another very quickly. Two or three weeks ago, uh, it showed money going to consumer discretionary and going into technology. That's gone now. You can see consumer discretionary and tech are among the worst in terms of their point score over this over the previous week. And now you see industrials, financials, energy doing better. So once the market decides what it's going to do with S&P 500 3950, which is those trend lines that it's bouncing off of and trying to start a new major trend change from, this will become a lot more clear. But right now, the market is uncertain, so it's moving around the sector board very quickly. Here's number four, cross asset, CARP model indicating risk on relationships. CARP model is another one of our models. CARPS is another acronym, which stands for cross asset relative performance. And what it does is it looks at eight equity related relationships um, and three fixed income relationships to try to determine where the outperformance is. And it's basically risk on or risk off. So we're looking at stocks or bonds. And again, those three different time periods, trading, tactical, strategic, high beta stocks or low volatility stocks, either large cap or small cap, the broad market S&P versus the blue chip Dow, broad market S&P versus the technology NDX, growth or value, and then we have US to develop a US or emerging down at the bottom. So what we're seeing here as the S&P 500 is negotiating this major support level at 39.50, trying to decide if this is a good breakout or not from back in January, look at this outperformance here. Stocks outperforming bonds, high beta outperforming low volatility, small cap over large cap. The broad market <clears throat> is outperforming blue chips. Technology is outperforming the broad market, growth outperforming value. So the market is set up to do better. There is a risk on kind of a tint to what's going on in terms of relative performance. I think that's important as we head forward. Something else that this doesn't show is that you're getting outperformance from the right places. Tech, semiconductors, and small cap currently are all outperforming the S&P 500 on a 63-day quarterly basis. So even though the market is not sure from a sector standpoint, there's a lot of rotation going on, trying to find the right places to be, you are seeing a risk on tilt to this CARP model that we use to find out where the performance is. Number five, relative performance. Stocks are also outperforming bonds. Another relationship that we look at to try to determine the character of the market on a strategic basis. Here you see the S&P 500 up top from October of last year. Down here is the relative performance of SPY versus AG, which is effectively in ETF terms, the S&P 500 versus bonds. And what you see here is since January the 20, it's flat, first of all, okay? That's the first thing that we should notice here is the spread is effectively flat as the market has been kind of drifting sideways for the most part here for the last several months. But within that, SPY has been outperforming AG since January the 23rd. While that's happened, it's given us this little rally here, just like it did between October 20th and December 14th of last year, when SPY was outperforming AG on a 63-day quarterly basis, it gave us all of this outperformance. So another reason that shows that the market is setting up for a major bullish trend change. It hasn't been confirmed yet. I want to see the Asbury 6 turn back to positive, but we are set up in such a way that looks like the market is leaning towards higher, higher prices uh, and a move higher into April, March and April, which is typically a seasonally strong period for the market. There's your daily five from March 7th, according to Asbury Research's approach to the market. If you like our approach to markets and investing, I invite you to visit our website at asburyresearch.com to get more information about us. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, visit the Asbury Research channel on YouTube and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I will see you at the next one. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. 
If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.